I'm going to look at this Heathkit model IT1121 curve tracer. So this is for testing transistors. And it's got an AB comparison stuff and what have you on here. It's got some sockets, it's also got some banana jacks so you can plug in leads and test using leads. You can hook up to different combinations. So we're going to basically do a refurb on this thing. Now, I believe it works already, but these things are things, I mean, they're getting very old. And I think this is like late 70s, I think it was. The capacitors and stuff in here are likely to be bad. There may be other things going on too. It may be working now, but it may not work next week. You just don't know. So we're going to pull this thing apart and have a good look at it. So, let's take the screws out of this thing. I'll go back once I've got them out. So sort of screws out. Let's see what's in here. How's this go together? It still doesn't want to move. Maybe it's not all the screws out. I was not sure is it was bolting something down or not. We'll take those out there as well then. It's probably what's holding it down. I was thinking it might be holding down a transformer or something. But uh, that's fine. It's attached to a transformer. I was right. But it's on standoffs. It's got that lovely old smell. <laughs> Alright, there we go. There's the main board. Let's have a bit of a glance around see if anything which looks potentially bad. These old carbon resistors, those could be a problem. They do go off value when they get old. It's got a fuse in the board here, there's another fuse down there. There's a ferret on that one, it's interesting. So the mains cable's coming in here. Go straight to the fuse, straight to this tab over here. It's got multiple tabs on here. This is a three core cable with the mains earth on it as well. Hey, not great. What's going on here? Earthing lead here. Interesting, so I think this is a shielded transformer but they've got the shield going to neutral. The earth wire is coming over here. There's a tab here. It's not soldered on. It's just sitting there, wrapped around, not soldered. We need to fix that. We're in fact going to replace this cable anyway, so it doesn't matter. But that's a bit of a bodge, isn't it? And that's been like that for how many years? Hmm. This transformer here has got two windings in series. Well, two windings, which can be put in series. Right now it's on 120 volts, so they're in parallel. What we have to do is rewire these four wires here. Basically, I'll take two off, one from each side join those together in the correct sequence and put them in series to make it 240 volts. You have to make sure you use the correct sequence otherwise the transformer ends up fighting itself because we one one going one way, one going the other way and ends up being a phase problem so best to make sure they're in series the correct way. The other one it looks kind of okay, it looks like it's all wrapped properly and everything here so this might be a factory one, it's all wrapped. But some of this other stuff's not looking particularly tidy but okay, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to get this board out and have a close look at that. Might do that first. Tab's not looking particularly well soldered. These carbon resistors are going to be the problem, I think. But electrolytics will be what we need to replace, so I think we've got to get all these knobs off and um, tap the shafts off. Because I think it's actually just mounting to the board here. Yeah, it's mounted by the shafts, so I'm going to have to take all those off to lift the board out. Well, this one has slid straight off easy, that's nice. So the next one. So the next one. So the next one, that's good. It'll be the last one, which is bad. Oh, they come off easy too. Well, I'm actually surprised. Excellent. So I've got to get these nuts off. Then that ball should come out. I've also got a spanner for this. It's a 13 mil spanner. It seems to fit well enough. Actually, you know what I might do? I might take this power cord off because this is just getting in the way. Because I'm not keeping it anyway. Let's get rid of it. I'll deal with it. Actually, those ones I could have left on, look. I'm not taking that board off. I only want this one. Let's put that one back on again. So these are washers on the other side as well, which have all fallen off. That's annoying. Here's one, two, hmm. maybe there's only three, or one stuck somewhere else. I guess we'll find out in the shorts out. There's the bolt. The wiring's pretty stiff. Got some socketed ICs in here, that's nice. 1974, 1974, 32nd week actually. 22nd, yeah, mid-1974. Well, it's looking pretty basic, as I expected. Electrolytics, these have got to be done. And then we'll go around and measure some of these carbon film resistors, as I said before. 
Um, I think that's actually not much to replace on this board. So you've got these four electrolytics, five, five electrolytics sitting right here. So there's only nine electrolytics to do. And they will replace them regardless. I'm not even going to tip, well, I'll test them when I pulled them out. But they will be getting replaced regardless. These marked, yes, the boards are actually marked about the polarities, which is nice. And they're all marked correctly. These ones actually got a positive marking instead of a negative marking. That's interesting. Usually it's a negative which is marked. These are marked positive. How unusual. This one's marked both, positive and negative. These ones marked positive. I mean, these older styles, these ones are usually marked positive. But uh, yeah, surprising to see these ones marked as positive, not negative. I guess at some point they changed. So these nuts here, probably half inch sizing, because 13's a bit loose on them. 12 was a bit, well, it wouldn't go on. So I think they're half inch nuts on these things so then we got three of these lock washers where'd the other one go maybe it was never there maybe we never know so i've got this set up here just to help take some stress off the board i'm not worried about wires breaking off you know these are old wires they're a little bit brittle they're quite stiff so i don't want to break wires off because that would be really hard to try and trace them again to where they go i mean i've got the manual i can you know figure it out but i don't want to go there if i don't have to Got these four electrolytics here, we'll place those. These 10 microfarad 50 watt. I've got heaps of 10 microfarad caps. So I'll take those out first, replace those, then we'll come over here and do this five, which I'll probably do it more vertically actually. Right, desolder again. I'll take out all four at once because all the same parts, and we shall go from there. Now I'm just going to need to find the right points just here, I think. There's one there. Now to make sure, remember, the positive is the side which is marked, not the negative. Don't get it back to front if you're doing this yourself. Normally the negative is the one that's got marking on it. So this Pro's kit I'm using, highly recommend it. It's a really good desoldering gun. This thing here. I've done a review on it. SS331. I have reviewed this in a video and it works really well. I've been using it ever since. And it's excellent, I really like it. Go and check that review out if you haven't already got a desoldering gun, which you're happy with. This beats the pants off that one I did before, that S993 handpiece one, built into motor or anything built into it, which I used for some time, a few years. This beats the pants off it, much better. Just gonna cut these off the tape, it's just easier. Don't need the full length of the legs. And then we have to try and do with tape residue. So on these ones, as you can see, hopefully, the negative is one that's marked. Not the positive, which is how things are traditionally done these days. That's why I was quite surprised to see the positive marks on the other ones. Haven't come across that before, I don't think. I mean, if all these carbon resistors are still okay, placing electrolytics might be all we have to do. I hope that's the case, but I will go around and measure some carbon resistors to see if they look about right. Might just random, like a, a random selection of them rather than every single one, I don't know, but yeah, we'll see. So that's those. Let's try and solder these upside down because that could possibly go wrong. Um, solder on set 300, it should be right for this. And I'm going to use my silver solder because I think I just want to. My fume extractor's over there. Um, not ideal. And it's not even turned on. Here we go, that's better. Now you can see. See how bad a job I'm doing at these soldering. So this one's done. Always hold the leads. Don't just clip them off and let them flick off because they could go anywhere, including inside the unit and get hung up on a wire or something. You never know, and then it moves around one day and start shorting things out. So those ones, now we come over and do these ones. So I've got to pull these caps out now. So I'm going to do. Yeah, I'll do these ones on the front edge first and work my way down the board. I think it's just more logical that way. And because I've been waffling so long in the chat, my iron's gone cold. I'll wait for it to heat up again. The only thing with the Pro Skate, it doesn't heat up that quickly. It's relatively slow to heat, but once it is heated up, it's great. It does have a sleep thing on it as well, so it drops down to 200 degrees. And will sit there so it preserves the iron life and that sort of stuff, which is good. I think it does after about five minutes. Something like that. Anyway, it's basically up to temperature now, so I can use it again.
So these ones are 50 microfarad 25 volt, both are same. X fuels. Alright, so what I do when I do these actual caps is I actually bend the legs so you can still read the markings on them. I always try and do that. I think it's just a good thing to do so the next person comes along can read the values without taking the cap out. Just like that. Oh, got a different cap. That's those two front edge. I think I'll solder those in now, get those leads out of the way. Right, let's get these soldered in. So this one's done. So I'll do the radial capacitor next. There we go. 100 microfarad, 16 volt. I think I've got one or two of those. He has a 35 volt, that'll do it. Now, physically, size is different. So, pin spacing or leg spacing is going to be a problem. So, I just measured both these capacitors and they've got significantly different values, ESRs and stuff. There's quite a big difference between them. Could have got some doing it in circuit because that certainly could affect it. I'm just going to take them out anyway because there's a big difference between them. I was just debating whether or not to leave them in. measure these. Now I've got them out of circuit. See if that's changed anything. 343 microfarad 0 0.18 ESR, so that's basically the same as it was in circuit. And this one here is 360 microfarad 0.22 ESR. So I know on the surface they don't look too bad, but they are different. Um, if I get a replacement cap, the capacitance on those has increased, which they shouldn't happen. I mean, these are 200 microfarad caps, right? 85 degree rated, but they're measuring 360, which is like a 50% increase. More than 50%. So that's, uh, I don't know, that's 70%. That's significantly different, which says these are probably drying out, they're probably starting to fail. Uh, the capacitance increasing is a sign of them starting to go. So I'm just going to replace them. If the capacitance was normal, or we know within like 20 to 20 percent or so, then I'd be less worried about it. But they're just significantly out. All right, let's get this thing soldered back in. So I might have a little inspection around, like, this pin here on the switch isn't looking too well soldered. I might just um, touch that up. I wonder if I should just go through and do an inspection of the little circuit board and actually just make sure that everything's actually looking alright. Yeah, I think I had enough solder on it originally. That's looking better. Okay. I should probably do an inspection of the circuit board and make sure there's no bad joints. So yeah, I'm going to inspect the board and check it out. So I've resoldered some joints of these switches. They're mostly okay, but there's about, I don't know, half a dozen I just touched up because they weren't quite as good as I liked them to be. So now we can go through, I think, and check some of these resistors and see if they look okay or not. And see if we get any values which we should be getting or not. Which means me reading colours off, interpreting the colours, because I never remember them. You know, I don't remember the colours. I don't remember them. I just don't remember colours and numbers. I just don't. I have to look them up every single time. You know, I've been doing electronics as I was seven, I still don't know how to read the colour codes unless I actually look at a chart on the wall. So let's figure out what we've got here. So we've got red, yellow, green, and it looks like silver or gold. So that is two, four, and five. What do we get? 695. There's your marking underneath it. Can you see that? Or oh, is that 2.4 meg marking on the ball? Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm getting 694. Could be in circuit testing though. It's lower, not higher. I can live with that. Yeah, anyway, next one, which you can't see. 395 ohms. What have you got your orange, blue, orange is that, or brown? Was that brown, blue, brown? Maybe I should just look at this circuit diagram 
or the layout and that'll tell me which one's which. Might be easy trying to read the codes off. This one here is supposed to be a 360 ohm. If I can get on there. Again 385 so it's slightly high. Yeah, okay. 10% up a little bit. Hmm. This one here that's doing 30.4k and it's like 27 underneath it. So again 10% high. This one's probably fine with those. 19.9k and the drawing says 20k so yep this one here 700k or 720k basically and the drawing says 5.1 meg again measuring lower probably fine because there's circuitry around it next one my hands are in the way of the meter aren't they 760 ohm let's rejig this this isn't working it makes far more sense like this 750 ohm this one here is 40k. This style I expect is going to be absolutely fine. Um, 40k, yep. This is his carbon ones I'm worried about. So that is 680k. It's supposed to be 1.2, is it? Yeah, 1.2 meg. Again, reading really lower because it's in circuit. This one here, 191 ohms, 180 ohms. This next one's supposed to be 1.5k over here. 1.6, that's fine. This one here, 740k, and that's supposed to be 10 meg again in circuit, of being affected by something. Yeah, I think they're mostly alright, aren't they? I mean, they seem to be basically okay. Let's test another random one somewhere. This one here. On a 13k, and that is 100k. Yeah, it's about 10% out, isn't it? They are aged a little bit, aren't they? They are definitely high in value. About 10% generally, it seems. What's this one here? 388 ohms. And that says 360 ohms. Yeah, they're all about 10% up. It probably won't matter. It seems fairly consistent. Let's check these two big ones over here. See if we can find them on the diagrams. So that's 12k on that one. And this one here. 12k. So we got brown, black, orange. 103, 10k. So that's more than 10k. That's like 20% up that one. Nothing horrendous though. They're all just slightly high. So I've had a look around the resistors on this board. They're generally about 10% up in value. The ones which are readable in circuit. A lot of them are reading below value because they're in circuit and so it's throwing the values off. It's what you normally get, so that's not surprising. Now there is a lot of flux around these switches from the original manufacturer. So I'm going to clean these off a bit, let's get rid of that flux. And let's leave it as it is. I mean the values are off slightly, not enough to worry about having to replace all the resistors. I'm just going to leave it as it is and just give us a clean. We'll put it back together. Um, obviously I'll do the power cord, replace that and rewire this for 240 volts. We'll do that as well. Yeah, I think we're not that far away from actually trying it out. So now we need to look at doing the power cord stuff. Now, as I mentioned before when I was pulled this thing apart, here's the earth wire. The original earth wire has been wrapped around but not soldered. Someone missed it. It's been dangerous for 40 years. Alright, so I just pulled the gland out of here. What you do with these is you just squeeze them in. Like I just actually just squeeze this with these pliers here to clamp it down to pull it out the hole there so we can get the wires at the back. I should have recorded a video doing that but I forgot again. Got some idiot again. So I've got to take those three wires off here. Although one of them's already, you know, practically off, isn't it? Yeah, no desoldering required in that one. So this wire is actually wrapped around the post as well and these tags, which is a good assembly technique, but it does make them harder to get off. One the few solder. Oh look at that. That's not soldered either. Wow. That's the mains coming in. So I'm really dropping the ball on this, didn't I? The soldered neutral. Not that one. On the plus side, it makes it easier to replace it. <laughs> 
this tack strip over here, which is where the mains feed comes in, so that it goes from the fuse to the switch back over to this tack strip. So, in fact, maybe I won't resolder this yet. I need to reconfigure this transformer anyway. So I need to just look at the manual, find out which wires I'm supposed to use for that, to make sure I use the right pairing, and reconfigure this for 240 volt. You've got to take all these four wires off, pop part of the red one there that stays there, and the black wire, only black wire, goes to this tag. The black and green wire is connected to the yellow and black wire, which goes onto this tag, and then the black and red wire, which is here, will stay on this tag in the end. So it end up going black and red to the red, yellow and black to the green and black, and the black to that side. Got it? This is going to be smoky. In fact, I should have applied the neutral wire to that first too, shouldn't I? Oh, I'll we'll come back to this. There we go, it's much more nicely soldered. Better than the original. Tripping flux off because I've got so much on there. Alright. So I really should have put the neutral wire on there before I soldered it on. It's only half soldered, that's why I stopped halfway. So it's not completely gone, that's good. I need to attach that one some more. I need to get the power cable in there, actually, I need to put some flux on. Uh, I'll see, it's all leaked out of here. I was using that. Get some flux on that as well. So that needs some on it. Power cable, that's the next thing I need. And I also need to hook up the earth tab as well, which will probably need flux on it too. Now I need to find a cable. So I found a gland which will fit this cable, but it's the wrong size for this hole, obviously, because you know that's the way these are. I need to make this hole bigger, but these holes are actually shaped so these don't spin. Well, that won't be possible anymore because I've got to round it out with this to make it bigger. So yeah, it's a bit of a shame, but anyway, it is what it is. Let's flip this over this way so the filings don't fall into it. I'll have them go on the desk. And I'll get reaming. I'll come back once it's done. So I've elongated this hole very slightly, and um, I've just done a quick test fit with this to make sure it will look like it will kind of guide in. And it will go, once, I, once that's been squashed and actually pinching the cable, that will actually slot through there just nicely. So that should be good now. So now I can wire this up. I need to get this tag to flow on, otherwise it'll just be a soldered wire hanging around a tag, which is much like the original factory setup. <laughs> because it's attached to the chassis, it's uh, sucking the heat away. That's way better than the original, which wasn't soldered at all. So, neutral wire. This one has to come across onto this point here. I'm blocking with my arm, of course. And now we can solve this one nicely. So I'm not happy with this live one yet. I know that's not well done yet. Just hit that one again. That's looking better. Okay, doesn't pull out. Excellent. So I was putting this plug on. Now, I was just saying this to the live chat people. I'm going to repeat myself. These New Zealand plugs are absolute garbage. The, the actual New Zealand plug design is rubbish. 
you want a, a decent plug, you want a UK plug. They're so robust. These things are like toys. And they're so damn dangerous. A lot of the old styles have got these exposed pins, fully exposed all the way down. Whereas the new ones have got a plastic sleeve over them now, so you can't touch them. Because what can actually happen, this design is made so badly, and designed so badly, you can actually touch that pin whilst it's still plugged into mains. And I actually had zaps off these things by unplugging one. Because it's natural when you're putting a plug out, you wrap your fingers around it a little bit like that. And then you touch it, and that's it, you get a zap. Incredibly dangerous. And it's obviously far more dangerous to children who can reach around much more easily. So it just amazes me that that's the standard plug for this country. And even Australia uses the same plugs. It's actual garbage. I don't understand how that became standard. Because it's just rubbish. Anyway, moving on. I'll wire this up and I'll come back. Right, let's do a earth test. Now we've got it assembled. Let's make sure the earth is actually coming through to the earth. Check the casing. Should be less than 1 ohm. 0.2 ohms. 0.1 ohms ish. Good enough. Check on here. That's fine. Let's check the external casing once I actually get the sides on, make sure they're earthed properly. That shouldn't be a problem, I don't think. Check the controls, they should be earthed. Earthed. Shouldn't be mad because it's got plastic knobs anyway, but I suppose we should check the handle too, shouldn't we? Yeah. That's fine. And I should record the video because then people will see what I'm doing. Between phaser neutral, getting 27.5 ohms across the transformer, which Probably okay, I should do some mouse on that. So about one amp. Earth pin, nothing there. So on the surface it appears okay, but I'll have to do an installation resistance test on this properly as well, just to make sure, but I'm not gonna worry about recording now, I think. Okay, first power up. Is it gonna work? Is it gonna go bang? Let's put my drink out of the way, no that hurt that. Switch is currently off. Let's turn it on. Watch hobby meter. 7 watts, that looks fine. Power factor, 0.39. <laughs> and it's drawing 80 milliamps, so it looks absolutely fine. Nothing around us there. There's no reefer caps in this, so we should be pretty safe. We should hook this up to a scope and try using it. Well, it's working. It's uh, definitely doing something. So I've been playing around with these knobs a bit. I don't have a clue what I'm doing, to be honest. And I'm just trying to check out different things and it does seem to be working. This is playing with the limiting resistor. We're changing that, it changes the way the transistor responds. It's changing the voltage. I'm currently doing a current step, it's checking current. Yeah, it works. It's definitely working, that's the main thing. Happy about that. No, I just need to find a use for it. So I just need to figure out how to use this thing, and I think it will be all set. It seems to be working at least kind of correctly. I mean, I can make it change and do things, and it seems consistent. I'm fairly sure that what we've got is all right. It definitely seems to be working properly. Seems to be. Thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not really subscribed, all that sort of stuff, and um, I'll have to learn how to use this thing. Do a playlist down here, play that. Playlist over there, subscribe link over here, Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel or want to buy bits of test kit effects like this thing. Bye.